live this here lifestyle. Came straight from the bottom to the top, my lifestyle. Swim, wet, wet, the winds whipped out the cannon. No time is a matter, but on the wilds whipped out the planet. Hold on, man, hold on, man. I'm a grown ass man. He brought me up to the most ignorant shit ever recorded. You know, it, it traps you because the beat is nice. It feels good, you hear what I'm saying? Boom, boom, did a lot, did a lot just to live this here lifestyle. Came straight from the bottom to the top, my lifestyle. Then his medication goes off. Swing, dip, dot, swing, whip, dot, the candy. No top of the mountain, pop on the white and whip that the what the fuck is that? I'm old school, you hear what I'm saying? Y'all can see from my game, I'm old school. I got on a Dobbs hat, yeah. Stacy Adams shoes, gold chain on the outside. You know I'm not one of these young boys because my pants cover my whole ass. <laughs> Grown man type shit. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm proud to be where I am. Come on now. I wear being old school like a badge of honor. Come on. I don't play with this shit. <laughs> look at this, look at this. Hey, fuck <laughs> 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 Damn right, for the people in the back with glaucoma, that's a beeper. <laughs> for you young folks, my man here, the way this works, person calls me, number shows up on the screen, then I gotta go outside and find a phone book. <laughs> which is the hard part, because there's three left in America. <laughs> Call them the hell back if I feel like it. This shit never runs out of minutes. There's a big advantage being the last brother in America with a beat, but this company has to do whatever the fuck I say. I'm their last customer. You understand what I'm saying? I break this contract, they are out of business. Before the show, Ray had said to me, saying, how much does it cost for a beep in 2018? I said, cost? <laughs> I said, nigga, they pay me. <laughs> I have to pay for this shit. I guess there's too much technology now. Shit's moving too fast. I'm tired of all this speed. I like shit to slow down. And it's moving so fast, they can't keep up with it. You see, everybody's shit is getting hacked. Mark Zuckerberg is up in the fucking Congress explaining Facebook. <laughs> Look at this Facebook. You worried about your information? You shouldn't have had it on the World Wide Web. What the fuck? I be lying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I turned 109 this year based on my Facebook profile. Look good for 109, don't it? Motherfuckers ain't gonna know shit about me. You know what I'm saying? These people put all they information on the computer and then they concerned with who knows what the fuck they do. My present situation. I'm in the Bahamas. All that tells niggas in Brooklyn is that your crib is empty. We, we about to come in there. Fuck all that shit. This stuff is too fast. I'm watching TV. They had a commercial for Alexis that parks itself. Y'all see this? You pull up to the space, take your hand off the wheel, your feet off the pedals, hit a button. The car is equipped with sensors that will parallel park this vehicle by itself. You in the driver's seat with your arms folded, the car is parking itself. Sounds nice, doesn't it? That's the laziest shit ever invented by a human being. You just drove four hours from DC, now you don't have the energy to park this shit? Parking is the end of the trip. You wanna impress me, drive, build me a car that drives me around, let me do the parking. And worse of all is the fact that everything you put in the car sooner or later will malfunction. All you need to do is find yourself on the Belt Parkway moving at 80. Now this shit wants to park. 
Come and find a slurpee behind the wheel because the car will park your ass at 80 miles an hour. Shit is moving too fast. Used to be a time when you could come to a show like this, and let's say you with a young lady that you're not supposed to be with. You could call back home, wifey picks up the phone, you good. Now, after the show, you go back home to wifey, you tell her whatever you need to tell her. You had a flat, you had to work late, you got abducted, whatever the fuck comes up. <laughs> you give her that. Now, you don't even have to get home. You sitting here with this beautiful young lady, you think everything's cool because you call wifey back at the house. Little do you know one of wifey's friends sitting in that corner with her cell phone. <laughs> Emailing that shit back to your wife. Your wife is sitting at home downloading and printing. At the end of the show, who you meet in the parking lot with a gun and a photo album? <laughs> Goddamn wife. Well, you don't even have to get to the house. You just get, you're just late. And she calls the car maker, hello, GM, I can't find how Escalade. <laughs> What's the code, man? 2301 <laughs> Yeah, we found the cards on Notion Avenue in front of Shaniqua's house. <laughs> and it's been there for about three, four hours, man. You can't get away with shit, even the cable box. You sitting at home with the side chick, and your main one calls you, the main name comes up on the fucking TV screen. <laughs> You're just chilling. I'm like, it gotta be women that came up with all this shit. <laughs> gotta be. <laughs> this technology, ain't no man inventing none of this shit. <laughs> all this shit is meant to, to catch us in some shit. I don't like any of it. You know what I'm saying? I like shit nice and slow from back in the old days. See, like I said, I'm old school. And it's not only technology. It's our kids that's, that's starting to fuck with me, too. I'm 59 years old. I came from a different time. You know, these little bastards, you can't talk to them because all of them got agency numbers on the cell phone. BCW and ACS on speed dial. You look at a child, hey, hey what the fuck are you doing? Nigga, I wish you would. I hit this button, 1-800-JAIL-MOM, bitch. Get the fuck up out of here. We couldn't do that when we were kids. We had one number, which is the same as it is now, 911. And it's not that we couldn't dial it. We didn't have push buttons. We had a rotary dial. Somebody's about to fuck you up. You know how long it takes for a nine? <laughs> On a rotary dial phone, looking at your mom. Ma, please don't. <laughs> By the time that come back around, your mother's planning your funeral. <laughs> these little bastards, there's something wrong with these kids now because they, these new parents are raising them with questions rather than raising them the way you're supposed to raise them. Is it okay if we put the cereal down and we have a box now? Is it okay if you don't run in the street? Is it okay if you don't stab your sister today and you've been to the emergency room three times? Is it okay? I'm not used to that. My mother's about that tall. She's from the West Indies. Small island called Barbados. Island about <coughs> half the size of the, you cut the stage in half, that's the, about the size of Barbados, right? <laughs> you flying to Barbados, you come out of the airport, you get into a cab, the first sign you see is welcome to Barbados. 10 minutes down the road, you see another sign, thank you for visiting Barbados. <laughs> you enjoyed yourself. And she didn't play. My mother was like most of your parents, spoke to you one time. If she had to speak twice, there was a demonstration involved. I'm gonna say, look, boy, you go in that sewing room, don't trouble those straight pins and needles. You wanna know why you mustn't play with these straight pins and needles? Bring your hand here. <laughs> you leave those straight pins and needles alone. You see these matches? Don't play with these matches. You wanna know why you mustn't play with these matches? Bring your hand here. Bring your hand here. She didn't stop there, boy. You don't run in the street. You wanna know why you mustn't run in the street? Stand at the end of the driveway. I'm gonna run your ass over. Prove a point. But we didn't get hurt like these kids. 
that we knew what was waiting for us. You understand? And it wasn't just our parents. Anybody on the block could bust your ass. I was down the block playing with matches in front of Miss Max house because I know my mother burnt my hand, told me not to play with matches. So I went down the block playing in front of Miss Max house. She walked out. She said, "What the hell are you doing?" Swack. Now watch in slow motion. What are you doing? <laughs> Reached from around her neck. Back in the day, all the women on my block had a strap around their neck. Because they knew sooner or later somebody's child was going to fuck up. They didn't have to look for it. It was right there. Swap! Pow! Grabbed me by my ear and then walked me down the block. Caught the boy playing with matches. And she doesn't leave. Because in order to show Miss Mac her respect, my mother got to tear me up in front of Miss. Thank you, Miss Mac. Thank you for busting his ass. Swat, swat, wow! That's what embarrassing me out here. Then playing with matches, they might burn your hand. And on the last stroke of that third beat, boy, it went to your father. Come on. <laughs> That's all I could do, go in the room and wait. I didn't have any video games, no TV. There was four walls and a bed. And my siblings were outside choreographing steps because the ass whipping after dinner was entertainment. But see, we didn't, get, we didn't get fucked up like these kids now. Y'all saw the, the little boy on, on the internet and on the news in the gorilla pit, Cincinnati Zoo last year, or two years ago, I think it's 2016. And when the film comes on, then you hear his mother, oh honey, relax, don't, don't be scared. Mama's here, don't be scared, relax. I wish he had turned around and said, bitch, where the fuck were you 10 minutes ago when I stuck my ass down here? Now I got a silverback babysitter, bitch. <laughs> and my friends would tell me, man, you're a little too rough on her. She had seven kids with her, and her child got away. I have run day, kids, day camps where I took 50 children to the Bronx Zoo, and I brought all 50 children back. One thing I know for sure is if one of those children happened to be my child, the last one that was going to end up in that gorilla pit was mine. I might come back to that camp with a fucked up story for Mr. and Mrs. Johnson. I tell y'all they didn't want to bring hard head right here. To the goddamn zoo, so now his ass is down there in the gorilla pit. Then you look on Facebook and these people were saying, well, can somebody help me to, to, to explain this to my children? I need to help them process this. Now you need social media to be a parent? Forget that. My father would have loved something like that to happen back when I was a kid. He'd say, listen, you want to know what happens to little boys that go and listen to their father? Watch the news. Watch this. I'm going to take you to Cincinnati. You see that? And Harumbe is going to drag your eyes. <laughs> I'm never have to misbehave again. I'm so tired of these goddamn kids, and there's something wrong with these kids. How many parents in the house? Round of applause. How many parents? Yeah. yeah. Did, did you not see that these kids are different? Yeah. 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 I'm talking about them. something mentally fucked up. Yeah. I walked into my sister's house, and my nephew is playing with this shit here. This shit here. <laughs> I said, what you got there? He said, this is, this is a fidget spinner, huh? I said, well, well, what does it do? He said, watch, watch. I said, That's it? He said, yeah, watch. I said, yeah. I grabbed the shit. I said, what the fuck is wrong with you? I said, nigga, is this entertaining you? This is holding your attention? I said, because you couldn't come up when we came up. Your brain would explode with a yo-yo. You know what I'm saying? Your fucking toys required skill. You had to 
if you had to have some skill to play without toys, if you could work a yo yo, you were you were famous in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. Rock the cradle. Walk the yo yo. Rock the cradle. Little girls fall in love with you because of how you handle a yo yo. I almost had diabetes at nine years old because my sister had that fucking Susie homemaker easy bake oven. I had to taste all them goddamn cupcakes made with a light bulb. And my mom said, don't hurt her feelings, huh? That's good. That's good. Let me get, let me get another one. <laughs> The shit that we had. My brother almost gave himself a brain aneurysm trying to make a circle with an etch a sketch. I said, what the fuck are you doing? One button is horizontal, the other button is vertical. <laughs> Skill. Remember click clacks? You got them goddamn things. And then the shit misses and hit your red cat. I had to learn to do this shit with the left hand. I got two cousins. Two cousins that are grandparents that do not speak to this day because of a game of jacks. You know what I mean? So one cousin was up to two Z's and she yeah. went for the jack and apparently she touched that shit. And I'm gonna say you out. She said, bitch, I ain't touching her. To this day, they don't speak. with all the shit that these kids, but they, they're trying to make being a kid hard all of a sudden. <laughs> Looking at me in class. <laughs> My sister's a junior high school teacher. I don't know if any of y'all have middle, middle-aged kids, middle school kids, junior high school kids, but no matter where you're located in the world, one thing's common about all of them. Every one of them is special aid. You hear me? Every fucking one of them middle school kids is fucked up. Something about that age, from 12 to 15, they, they're gone. And I'm standing in my sister's class just watching these kids come in. I'm standing right next to them. And then one kid comes in the back of the room. Said to myself, what the fuck is wrong with him? She said, I don't know, I gotta talk to him. She said, come here, Jamal, what's the matter? They've been bullying me. So my sister said, where, out in the hallway? Or in front of the school? No! <laughs> on, on, on my computer. <laughs> I looked at my sister, I said, this nigga's trying to play you. <laughs> she said, no, it's a big problem. We had parent teachers meeting about it. They've written articles about it. We talk to the kids about this all the time. I said, can I talk to him? She said, sure. I said, what's his name? She said, Jamal. I said, come here, pussy. I need you to help me understand. You were in your house with your family there. Doors were locked, your windows were down. You safe and sound, and somebody said something to you on your computer last night. I got you crying in class today? Yeah! And, and, and I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do. I grabbed him by 
his collar. I said, nigga, log off. <laughs> was sitting right next to me. And he was whispering in my ear like we were on a date. Uh, Saint, I hope you did our homework. Because if we get a zero, I'm fucking you up. That's the first time that nigga ever got all his pronouns right. We learned our first sign language lesson from a, a bully in school. Remember you in class, focus in the third grade for the fourth time? You're like, I'm getting out of this class. Just yeah, fuck that bullshit. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, at the door, you hear, you look up. Everybody in front of you go like this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know Raheem and them niggas. <laughs> well, we had to deal with that shit ourselves. We have a, a agency to call. I'll give you one more example before I get out of here. I remember a bully on my block stole my bike. Now listen to what I said, family. Bully on my block stole my bike, which meant he didn't grab the bike and ride away. The motherfucker lived on my block. So I'm standing there watching this nigga. <laughs> I go back in the house and said, Bye. Butch stole my bike. I'm gonna say, Butch stole your bicycle? Well, you better go outside and get your bicycle back for Butch. And if you have to fight Butch, then you better fight Butch. Because if you don't fight Butch, I'm going to get the bicycle, then you have to fight me. And you know your record against me is zero wins and about 300 losses. So I had to do exactly that. I had a cousin that's two years older than myself. He taught me how to fight. He said, listen. When you go out there, you got to take advantage of whatever you can take advantage of. He said, now, I know this motherfucker's big as hell. I don't know what it was about thugs back then, but they were always more developed than everybody else. Yeah. Motherfucker had muscles, mustache, beard, <laughs> sideburns. We were in the fourth grade. This <laughs> nigga's riding my bike. Listen, I don't care how big a dude is and how long he stays in the gym, there ain't a machine in the gym that can help him work out his eye. He can exercise every muscle in his body, but there's nothing to help his eye get bigger. Everybody's eye is the same. Hit him in the eye, that motherfucker got to at least stop. So I did that. I walked up to him, I said, Bush. My mother said, Turned around to run, but then I looked over my shoulder and when I looked, I saw he covered his eye, he had a tear coming down uh -huh. the bottom of his face. Yeah. When I saw the tear, nigga, don't you ever <laughs> fuck with me or anybody else on this block. And another thing, just then, that tear dried up. <laughs> He sniffled, I got on that fucking bike, I got the fuck up out of there. But I was taught a, va a valuable lesson, y'all gotta fight my own battle, okay? And we became best friends, that's how that used to work. You would have a fight with somebody and now there's mutual respect and you never had to worry about that person again. Now these little bastards, every little thing, <laughs> he's bullying me, nigga, it's called snapping. Okay, somebody look at you and talk about your, your reject sneakers, that's called snapping, it's not bullying. Your mom shouldn't have sent you to school with them fucked up stickers. It's a rite of passage, you understand? You learn a lesson. You go back home and say, Ma, don't get my sneakers from Pathmark no more. These motherfuckers gave me a hard way to go. And most of us that are in this game had to deal with that. 
people snapped on you, we were able to snap back, and that's how the fuck we got into this this business. I had a vinyl coat. Come on, I had six brothers and sisters, two cousins that lived with us. My pops had to get us what the fuck he could afford. And I had a vinyl coat walking through Erasmus Hall. You couldn't tell me shit. <laughs> My friend said, yo, sick, that's a nice leather jacket. I said, thank you, son. He said, yo, when you need to clean that, I got a bottle of Armor All outside. <laughs> I said, who the fuck told this nigga about my jack? <laughs> but then you look that motherfucker up and down, you find something wrong with him, or you remember something about him. And that's how we kept it going. You talked about my jack, and I want to tell you something, I'll go straight to your mom so we can cut this shit short. <laughs> See, your mother's so stupid, the bitch is climbing trees outside the bank trying to become branch manager. <laughs> Usually they had to cut it right there. Ah! We didn't have all these problems that these kids have. I'm just telling you this, listen, you love your children or your grandchildren, your nieces and nephews. You want to bring them up the right way, you bring them up the old fashioned way. Okay, because whether you know it or not, this government's trying to take discipline out of our homes because they knew back when we were struggling, it was those disciplined people that was re responsible for the civil rights movement. Rosa Parks was a person who got her ass whipped, wouldn't move from a bus. That kept us strong, kept us stubborn. We weren't let persons move us from left to right. Now they take it out of the home, they can make your kids do any goddamn thing. Exactly. So you bust that, like my mother used to do, don't even wait till they do something wrong. <laughs> Sometimes you just fuck them up because it's Thursday. <laughs> Walk in the house and just bust their ass for no reason. Bam! Nigga, that's for some shit you did that I didn't catch. Now you got ass whooping credit. And don't be so fast to buy these kids everything they want. You got to show them how to appreciate a dollar. You got to let them know what the struggle is. My pops was good with that. I don't know if any of you women have ever went gone out with a West Indian man. That's the cheapest animal in the world. You hear me? You can Google that shit. My father knew how to turn a dollar into a bungee cord. He stretched the shit out of a dollar. Fastest way to get your ass fucked up in my house was make a cup of tea and throw that bag out after one cup. My father lose his mind. <laughs> Last name Rockefeller. It's <laughs> hit the lottery last night. You <laughs> throw that bag out after one cup of tea. They gonna kill you. You hear what I'm saying? And this man's cheapness allowed me to stretch dollars and do things that I wouldn't be able to do otherwise. You know, the folks that grew up here in New York know what clubbing was in this area. Back in the day, we used to go clubbing every weekend, bunches of clubs. Red Parrot, Silver Shadow, go to Bentley's, go to Jersey, to Zanzibar. Okay, for the real party people, you go to the Paradise Garage, 10 o'clock on Saturday. Don't come out till noon on Sunday. You in the church trying to hide the stamp on the back of your hand. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. That's right, membership card. You couldn't get into the garage, you had to have a membership card. And in all that clubbing, I never had to pay to go to a club. And you know what it is, when you club in this area around January, February, it's cold as hell, line going around the corner. You wanna get into that club, but it's freezing. You got on three sweaters and a coat, people still see your nipples. You wanna get into the club, you don't wanna wait on that line. My father said, this is what you do. You take your car. And you park your car four or five blocks away. Leave your coat and your jacket in that car. Come out of that car with your own drink, ice and straw. You walk in front of the club with that drink, the bouncer's gonna say, hey, you can't be outside with that liquor. Get the fuck back inside. <laughs> Peace and God bless Brooklyn. <laughs>